problem number 11. We want to expand each of these expressions. That basically just means multiply it out. Of course, it might be tempting to try to distribute that exponent, but that is not correct. Exponents don't distribute over addition. So I'm going to have to write this as a FOIL problem in order to work it out correctly. And so I do my FOIL. I've got 4 sine squared x at the front. I've got in the outer a 6 cosine x sine x. And in the inner, I've got another 6 cosine x sine x. So that'll make 12 of those in all, 12 cosine x sine x. And at the back, I've got 9 cosine squared x. I don't really see any obvious way to clean this up. And so here would be the final answer. Part B is similar with a slight variation at the end. So of course I'm going to write it out as the FOIL problem. And then I can start my FOILing. I'm going to have 16 cosine squared x. Let's see, the inner and outer each make negative 16 cosine x sine x. Yep, here's another one, negative 16 cosine x sine x. So all of that would make negative 32 cosine x sine x. And then I have, for the end, 16 sine squared x. Now, the last time we stopped there, the reason this one is different is because this time the coefficients of the cosine squared x and the sine x squared terms match. Well, I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. That means 16 cosine squared x plus 16 sine squared x is just 16. If you're not seeing that, all you'd have to do is factor out the 16 from those two pieces. In other words, rearrange the last two terms, right? switch places with these two, and then factor the 16 out. What's going to be left? Cosine squared x plus sine squared x. But of course, that parentheses there is just equal to 1, and so it goes away. My final answer to the problem then becomes 16 minus 32 cosine x sine x. Problem number 12, we want to find all the values of x between 0 and 2 pi that satisfy the equation. This is similar to what we've already done, only this time we're going to go to the calculator. These are not nice ones we can do by hand, so we'll be giving approximate answers. Same idea though, I see sine x equals 1 third. I got to draw myself a good picture. What quadrants might my angle be in? Well, sine is positive in the first quadrant. It's also positive in the second quadrant. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. So here is the first angle. I have no idea what it is because it's not a nice angle. Here is the second angle. Well, I can use the sine inverse function on my calculator to get the first angle. Sine inverse knows about angles between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, or negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So it's going to work great for that first angle. How about I call that x sub 1? So the first angle, easy enough, sine inverse of 1 third. On the calculator, I am in radian mode. I'll type in the sine inverse 1 third. And to two decimal places, that ends up being about 0.34 radians. Now, how do I get the second angle? I cannot use the inverse sine function directly, because inverse sine doesn't know about angles in the second quadrant. What I have to do is rely on the symmetry of the picture. The key is this angle here is the same as this angle here. Well, we just figured out that little red angle, it's 0.34 radians. So my second answer is simply pi, 180 degrees, minus the 0.34. In other words, here's pi, right, 180. If you take out the red part, what you end up with, what you have left, is the angle that I'm interested in, that x2 angle. Well, that I can do on the calculator. In fact, what we'll do is pi minus our last answer, so we don't have any rounding issues, and that comes out to be 2.80 radians. And so there are my two solutions.
Part B, where is the cosine ratio negative? Well, it's positive in quadrants one and four, so it's negative here in quadrant two, it's negative here in quadrant three. Let's see, this one isn't even a fraction. I mean, you could label the sides if you want. I guess you'd have to just think of this as over one and say cosine is adjacent, negative 0 0.678 over one. The main thing, though, is to identify the two angles that we're interested in. One of the angles is a second quadrant angle. It's this angle right here. The other angle is a third quadrant angle. It is this angle right here. Okay, how will I get those two angles? Can I use the cosine inverse function? Well, cosine inverse knows about angles between 0 and 180 degrees, or 0 and pi, which means it's perfect for finding that smaller angle. Cosine inverse does know about angles in the second quadrant. So to get that first answer, I'll just do cosine inverse of that decimal number. So cosine inverse of negative 0.678 gives me about 2.32 radians. Now how will I get that larger red angle? Can't use cosine inverse. Cosine inverse has never heard of angles in the third quadrant. The key is to find some kind of symmetry in the picture. Can I spot this angle here somewhere else in this picture? Because I know the measure of this angle. It's 2.32 radians. And the answer is yes, absolutely. It's the same angle that I have here. Clearly, from the symmetry of the picture, this is also 2.32 radians. Well, I want to find this angle. It looks like if I went all the way around, of course, that would be 2 pi. And if I subtracted out the green angle here, which is the 2.32, then I'll have this red angle, right? The red plus the green is 2 pi. So 2 pi minus 2.32 will give me what I want. On the calculator, we'll do 2 pi minus that last answer, 3.97 radians. And so there are my two answers. And then part C, let's see, tangent is positive in the first quadrant, of course, as well as in the third quadrant. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Here, both of those values would be negative, opposite over adjacent. Let's draw in the two angles. Drawing in the angles is so critical because then I can picture exactly what I need can I use the inverse tangent function to find either of these angles? Well, I can use it for the smaller angle because inverse tangent knows about angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that smaller angle is in that section. So x1 would just be the inverse tangent of 0.25. And we can get that right off the calculator. Inverse tangent 0.25 gives me 0.24 radians. Okay, how will I get the other one? Well, there's a lot of symmetry in this picture. Can you see that 0.24 somewhere else? And the answer is, well, yeah, it's right here. It's the same triangle. So this is also 0.24, which means that second red angle is simply pi plus the little 0.24 more. x2 then is pi plus the 0.24. It makes good sense because the period of the tangent function is pi. Every pi you land at the same values. We'll do pi plus the last answer and that gives us 3.39 radians. And we're done. Problem number 13, we want to solve each of these equations for x. We want to find all the answers, all exact radian solutions. Well, here we're going to need to get that cosine by itself first. So I'll add 1 to both sides. And then I will divide both sides by 2. And now I have cosine x equals 1 half. You always want to get down to a single trig function, an x, an equal sign, and a single number. The first thing I will need to do is find all of the solutions within one period, within 0 to 2 pi. So it's all about drawing those pictures. Cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Let's see, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse in each case. 
That would make this square to 3. This is obviously a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The 60 degrees is opposite the root 3. So these are two little 60 degree reference angles. What solutions have I just found? Well, I found a first quadrant solution and I found a fourth quadrant solution. We want to work in radians here. The first quadrant solution is just 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. The fourth quadrant solution is 60 degrees short of a full revolution. That would be 300 degrees, which is 5 pi over 3. And then all I have to do to find all the solutions is simply recognize that, of course, you could spin around more than once and land at these same places. In other words, you could add any multiple of 2 pi. 2k pi is how we say that. And you could add any multiple of 2 pi onto this one as well to obtain other answers. k could be positive or negative. k stands for an integer. So you could rotate around clockwise more than once, counterclockwise, and land at all those same spots. And then lastly, 4 sine x equals 0. I'll have to divide by 4, although that's pretty simple. That leaves me with sine x equals 0. Same strategy. Find all the solutions within one period. Now, when I see a 0, I'm thinking this is going to be a unit circle problem. Sine is the b coordinate. Where do I have a b coordinate of 0? It happens right here at 1 comma 0 and it happens right here at negative 1 comma 0. So the only solutions within one full period would be 0 itself, 0 radians, and then pi radians. And of course to find all the solutions I would just have to add to each of these multiples of 2 pi. However when your two solutions are equally spaced as they are here, there's an easier way to write the answer. I mean, we're basically saying that 0 is an answer, followed by pi, followed by 2 pi when you rotate around again, and then 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. You can write this simpler as simply 0, the first one, plus not multiples of 2 pi, but just multiples of pi. And in fact, you don't even need the 0, so the simplest way to write this answer is just any multiple of pi. And we always want to write our answers as simply as we can. There then would be the final answer.